Public affairs programming on WQPT is brought to you by the Singh Group at Merrill Lynch, serving the wealth management needs of clients in the region for over 25 years. Time for seniors to make an important medical decision and going back in time with the French masters who've now found a new home in the cities. The Figgy's exciting new exhibit takes us back in time as French painters transform the art world. Your chance to be immersed in the masters coming up. But first, getting your health care in order. Now is the time for seniors on Medicare to get their health care plans all set. It's the start of the Medicare enrollment period. It's also a time for the entire family to start thinking about the best way, perhaps even the cheapest way, to make sure all your health care bills get paid. It may seem like a daunting task, but it doesn't have to be. Joining us is the program director for the Western Illinois Area Agency on Aging, Jacob Irish. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Let's start with that. I mean, a lot of people get very nervous. It seems daunting and mm -hmm. they just think, you know what, I'm not going to do anything. Yeah, no, um, anything with Medicare, it's always going to be confusing. So, um, I mean, the at the Western Illinois Area Agency on Aging and all of our funded providers, we try to make it as easy as possible because we do have a ship, or a certified SHIP counselors, mm -hmm. which is the Senior Health Insurance Program. And really it does, it seems daunting as you said, but we break it down as easy as we can. And if we can't get it done in one meeting, uh, we'll just kind of break it down into pieces and uh, you know, walk the person right through the, the whole situation. The worst thing you could do is ignore it? Ex yes, the worst thing you could do is just, uh, just think that your plan is gonna be good forever um, because it does change uh, year to year when it comes to your Medicare Part D prescription drug plan as well as your Medicare Advantage plan. If you have an HMO or a PPO, that's what I mean when I talk about Medicare right. Advantage. Mm -hmm. Well, and let's let's actually start Medicare 101. Yeah. Uh, 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 a, B, C, and D. A and B are basically guaranteed. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say the the, the the retail base, but then you get C and D, and explain those. Yeah. So uh, A and B, it's, as long as you've uh, paid into Social Security 40 quarters or the equivalent of 10 years, then you get A and B. So that's the foundation, like you said. Uh, so Medicare Part D will be your prescription drug coverage. Um, and then C is um, a Medicare Advantage. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where they wrap your A, your B, and your prescription drug coverage all into one plan um, that does have um, networks that you have to pay attention to and go to doctors and hospitals in that network. Um, and then there's also Medicare supplements, which uh, I always tell people that it's probably good to either have a Medicare supplement or a Medicare Advantage plan so you have an extra uh, safety net, I guess, just so you're not paying out too much money. Well, and the key concern for so many people is that they just want to keep seeing the same doctor they've been seeing. Yeah. So when you're actually getting involved in registering for a particular plan, you really do have to take a look at those particular options. Does your doctor actually mm -hmm. accept it? How important is it to do a little bit of homework ahead of time? It's extremely important. Um, and uh, uh, so yeah, when, especially when it comes to Medicare Advantage, your, mm -hmm. your doctor and the hospital, um, even your phar pharmacies can sign new contracts every year. So if you're in, you know, uh, uh, Medicare Advantage plan, we'll just say plan one, just so we're not using any insurance names, um, but uh, that plan could have your family doctor ne in network this year for 2018. For next year, they could change the contract and maybe that doctor decides not to take it. That's so. why you got to be careful not to ignore it. You have to take a look and find out if the plan is the same as it was or if mm -hmm. it's improved or different. Yeah, absolutely. And it's really important to do between October 15th and December 7th. But luckily, the government has put in an additional period where you can, if you have a Medicare Advantage plan at least, you will have uh, an additional period at the beginning of next week or mm -hmm. next year um, where you can make sure, say you go to your doctor and you find out, oh, uh, my doctor is not in network, you, you will have a three month period from January 1st uh, to March 31st where you can actually uh, change your change mind. It. Yeah, yeah. I, and that was what I was going to get to as well is that it, you're not necessarily locked in stone during this period of time, but you do have to make some type of decision before what, mid-December? Uh, yes, so it's uh, October 15th through December 7th is where um, for, for almost all, or most people, as long as they're not part of a uh, assistance program, they have to make a decision by December 7th. Um, and and if, if you don't, if you're on a 
prescription drug plan, then you're stuck in that plan all for next year, right. whether you like it or not. There are a few situations, uh, which um, is kind of on a one-on-one -on -one basis. We can walk through some of those um, with a ship counselor. Um, but uh, yeah, for the most part, if you don't check before December 7th, you're kind of stuck in that plan. Um, for better or for worse. Yeah, for better or for worse. <laughs> and, and, and so in a way that, I mean, right now is your chance to make the decisions for yourself. Now let's talk about these ship counselors because these people aren't trying to sell you one plan over another. What, what, what's the duty of the counselor if I call and, yeah. and need some help? Uh, so SHIP uh, Senior Health Insurance Program is a state and federally funded program. So we're not allowed to um, advocate for one company or the other. Um, we can, however, so we can't tell you this is the plan to go with, this is the plan you want to be with. Um, we can, but we can break down, you know, what can your budget handle? Mm -hmm. What medications are you on, which is the most important thing because just because you have a, a plan this year that is covering all your prescriptions really well, it doesn't mean the next year it's gonna do the same thing. Every right. year those plans can um, negotiate with the pharmaceutical companies as well as the, um, the pharmacies as well to get different deals on those. Exactly. So, so you might have the best plan one year, but the next year it could be completely different and there might be a better option. And let's be honest, that's happening all the time. I mean, you're, you're seeing difference in prices as well. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, a bunch of different variables, especially when it comes to uh, prescription drugs. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's talk about one other thing, and that is that you guys are pretty proud that uh, you helped about 1,200 people, more than 1,200 people in, in the last period. Mm -hmm with some considerable savings that you added up. Uh -huh. how, much, yeah. how much were you able to save people? So one thing I want to mention is it wasn't just Western Illinois Area Agency on Aging. We actually serve a nine county area, so all the way on um, I-80, all the way over to LaSalle, and then if you take uh, I-74 and then hit 34 all the way down <laughs> to McDonough County, we right. also, we ha so we have offices in every county. Um, they are our community focal points. So collectively, we had uh, 1,200 people that decided to change plans, and of that, we saved one million nine hundred and twenty-seven thousand dollars. So, or, well, yeah, um, and that's is... out-of-pocket expenses mm -hmm. that uh, uh, these people that had uh, signed up might have paid more for. Absolutely, yeah. So basically, this was just comparing their plan, and in most cases, these were people that had been in before. So we met with them, uh, we went over all the plans, and uh, if they chose to, we put them into the plan that was more affordable for them. Mm -hmm. So then they come back the next year, um, and that plan that was the best for them was no longer paying as much for their prescriptions right. as the one before. So uh, we just uh, talked to them about the price difference and kept kept a track of all the savings that we made and. Uh, kind of blew our minds how yeah. much money you could save. <laughs> that's that's a lot of nickels and dimes. It's Let's talk about some of the things that people are getting in the mail right now because uh, some seniors have already received their notices of change that came in September and that was kind of, you can kind of use that as a baseline for what you have and what you could get. Yeah, so you will get, um, and it is, uh, uh, speaking of daunting, that booklet is pretty daunting. Yeah. Um, so you'll get a booklet that is your annual notice of change from whatever plan you're on. So and you should have gotten that by now, right? Because it was gotten mailed it. out in September? Yep, should have got it by the end of September. Um, usually they come out the first couple of weeks of September. But that's, we always say that's your red flag to call a ship counselor and mm -hmm. set up an appointment so you can go over the really nitty gritty details. Because in that book you will find, um, you'll find all your prescriptions that you might be on, and they'll be based in tiers. Um, so tier one is the cheapest prescription, tier five the most expensive. Um, but it's a lot to go through and go through that and just because you have to find your prescription, go back to the front. Right. Um, so if you come to see a ship counselor, we can put all your information into medicare.gov, um, and we use it all the time so we know how to just give you pretty much uh, uh, you know, down to the dollar on how much you pay for each of your, your prescriptions when you go pick it up from the pharmacy. And the other mailing, and, and it's, it, it's gonna affect seniors, and now we have scammers that are involved. New mm -hmm. Medicare ID cards yep. uh, were mailed, or will be mailed now until April. Mm -hmm. um, and they're kind of getting rid of the social security number and you're giving your own uh, Medicare ID number. Yeah. The only problem is scammers are finding out who they're getting mailed to and they're calling and saying, hey, we're from the government. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the ID card. Why is that new and important for seniors? Um, so like you said, there's a lot of scams and when you get a call, um, it could be any scam, which there's all sorts of them. Oh but boy, there when, are. Yeah, when you get a call from somebody that says, this is Medicare, you're like, okay, that's my health insurance. Mm -hmm. I need to pay attention to that. So the one thing to remember is Medicare, will never call you. Absolutely, uh, if they need to get a, yep. yeah. If they need to call you or need to get in contact with you, they'll send you a letter. Um, but yeah, you're not gonna receive a call. Um, 
but it had your social security number on it. So it was an easy scam to get people's yeah. social security number. Um, and then they can use that to branch off and get all your other information. So uh, the, the new number is, uh, they call it an unintelligible I identifier. And it's just a random selection of letters and numbers. And ho we're hoping that will kind of uh, get rid of some of the scams. Yeah, but, but once again, I mean, for seniors, I mean, you're somewhat vulnerable because, let's be honest, you have to make these healthcare decisions. You're a little nervous about it. You may be scared that you make the wrong decision. And then you get somebody calling in saying they're from the government and you've got to do this and this and this, and it's a scam. The key, once again, I really do want to underline this, yeah. is that the government will not call you and ask you about your Medicare. Absolutely. And actually, I've got, uh, if you do receive a call from uh, a scam or if you get wrapped up in a Medicare scam, the Senior Medicare Patrol is a, uh, a great uh, entity in the state of Illinois that will um, that you can report scams to. Uh, they can help you out if you're a victim of a Medicare scam. Um, and they also help with any billing issues and stuff like that. But uh, SHIP counselors can also help with a portion of that as well. Let's talk about your counselor locations, the Area Agency on Aging, the Rock Island County Senior Center in mm -hmm. Iowa at Milestones. What do you do? You got to make, you don't just walk in off the street, right? No, yeah, we prefer to have people call in. Uh, so you'd call in and make an appointment, uh, usually about an hour appointment, depending on the situation. And one thing to remember is if it's uh, you and your spouse, uh, make sure you get a two hour appointment. so that they have enough time so you, basically so the counselor's not rushing to get you out maybe and well hopefully not but make a mistake you want to make sure you have enough time for you and your spouse uh, because uh, everybody's situation is different and we want to make sure that we're looking at we're giving you enough time to look at all the different pieces and show you what you're going to be on for 2019. Well, it might be good to bring in, what, a, a daughter or a son as well, just so that everyone mm -hmm. is kind of in on your medical planning. I mean, mm -hmm. you welcome that as well? Absolutely, yeah. Um, so you, you definitely want, uh, if you have a, uh, you know, a son or a daughter that uh, kind of takes care of your affairs mm -hmm. or maybe you're going to be your power of attorney at some point, it's really good to work closely with them so they know what's going on. Keep everyone in the loop. Uh, exactly. So because you never know what, when something's going to happen and if somebody needs to step in, it's good to have them at least have the base level of information so that they can step in for you. Jacob Irish, the uh, program director for the uh, Western Illinois Area Agency on Aging. Yep. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. You. We appreciate <laughs> In a moment, the French Masters. But first, here's Laura Adams. She's out and about. This is Out and About for October 15th through 21st. Hi, I'm Laura Adams. Come out and cheer the Quad City Storm during their inaugural hockey season at the Tax Slayer Center. Or wear a costume and celebrate scarecrow shenanigans at the Family Museum October 21st. The East Moline Library becomes a haunted house on October 21st. Enter if you dare. And Prospect Park is the site for spectacular trick-or-treating around the park on the 20th. While French moderns Monet de Matisse are on display at the Figgy Art Museum through January. January 6th. The Putnam Museum hosts a homegrown exhibit, Literary Heroines, through January 6th. And there's something new at a Black Light Trivia Night at the Camden Center in Milan on the 20th. Plus, Gilda's Club is hosting a Saturday Night Live Trivia Night at the Knights of Columbus in Davenport, October 19th. The Quad City Wind Ensemble presents a fall program titled War and Remembrance at the Galvin Fine Arts Center on the 21st, while the Black Box Theater presents the Orson Welles classic War of the Worlds, a radio play, through the 21st. The Crucible is on stage at the Bruner Theater Center through the 21st, and the Rocky Horror Show returns to the Circa 21 Speakeasy through the 27th. Plus, Ballet Quad Cities presents the gothic horror story Dracula at the Spotlight Theater. Finally, the Bucktown Review returns to the Davenport Junior Theater for a night of entertainment. For more information, visit wqpt.org. Thank you, Laura. Jason Carl is the proud frontman of the group Jason Carl and the Whole Damn Band. That's the name of the band. We caught up with him as he played some original work on the stage of Moline's Black Box Theater. So here's Jason Carl with Your You. She got her position by working in certain angles. And you let that knowledge strangle up your mind. Well, she's dancing up the ladder and living like a queen. Got that image stuck inside your head But you're you, not them That's the beauty of it all You don't have to give a damn what they think Cause you're you, not them That's 
the beauty of it all You don't have to give a damn what they think They all think you're going to hell But you don't really care You might as well go out with a bang And they all say you're crazy But you don't seem to mind Crazy is thinking that you're sane If you're you, not them And that's the beauty of it all You don't have to give a damn what they think No, cause you're you, not them And that's the beauty of it all You don't have to give a damn what they think I try to live my life the best way I can worry about tomorrow when it's here I'm trying to improve every way I can But I'm not dying to live my life in fear No, Johnny, he tried to walk the line And Mama, she tried to quit While you're trying to squeeze the most out of life Cause you're you, not them But that's the beauty of it all You don't have to give a damn what they think But you're you, not them And that's the beauty of it all You don't have to give a damn what they think No, cause you're you, not them And that's the beauty of it all You don't have to give a damn what they think Jason Carl, you're you. The third floor of downtown Damport's Figgy Art Museum is now taken over by the French. French moderns, Monet to Matisse, 1850 to 1950 is an exhibit from the Brooklyn Museum in New York, showcasing some amazing artwork you'd usually only see at the major galleries. And joining us is Tim Schiffer, the executive director of the Figgy. This is a coup. This took you a while to bring to the Quad Cities. It's been a few years in the planning since we committed to bringing the show here and it's hard to believe it's here actually but it's exciting. Why are the French masters, well, I mean they were trailblazers at the time, I mean why are they so special even today? You know we everyone loves impressionist painting and and it is funny because at the time that the paintings were done they were considered outrageously incompetent horrible you know insulting pieces but in retrospect we see them as colorful, lively, romantic, um, because of the, of the subject matter, you know, people at leisure, beautiful landscapes, mm -hmm. um, because of the way they're painted, so loose and, and free. Portraitures as well. Portraits, yeah. Um, so it's just time changes things. Well, I'm, I'm, you, when you're talking about the, the masters in this period of time, like you said, it, it, it's, the, it's the color because it's such a breakaway from what, right. what preceded it. Right. But also, because I was reading up more about the brush stroke right. and the boldness of the paintings right. as well. Yeah. One, th one thing that's great about the show is that it starts in the mid-19th century with the academic painters. And then, you know, you couldn't show brush stroke. Color was something to be, you know, very carefully controlled, mm -hmm. and the, the pre-impressionists and the impressionists and then the painters that followed them, they like liberated art. They liberated painting from very prescribed um, regulations almost of how things should be depicted and what was the proper subject for art. And they really opened it up and, and they said there's this burgeoning middle class and we want to paint the life of the people. Because I was going to see, it almost seems like paintings and artwork before that was done for patrons. Right. Or was done for the church. With the or church. Or was done very privately. And right. this was almost, in my opinion, the beginning of public art, more so. Very much so. And it coincided with the rise of the middle class and the industrialization of society. So there, you know, people lived in cities. Paris was it was the leading city of the world, and then they would go out into the countryside and with the train system that had just come along. Mm -hmm. And artists, actually, they invented the tube of paint at that same time, so they could carry their paints out into the, 
into nature, you know, and Monet is really famous for always going out and painting in nature. Yeah, you, and there's the, a beautiful the, seascape by Monet that he painted on site, you know, in the show. Yeah, the whole thing with uh, have easel will travel in so exactly. many different ways. Yes, yeah, exactly. But tell me some of the artists of this time, because these are the artists that we now know today. Right. So and they were hacks back then. They, well, they they were. Um, I was telling somebody today, it's like if you went from chamber music to rock and roll, yeah. that's what happened in that period in art. And so they were kind of maybe the Beatles of their time. They like revolutionized painting. And it was, you know, Monet was impoverished until later in his life because he never sold a painting. I mean, Van Gogh never sold a painting during his lifetime. So. Um, Hard to believe. It's hard to believe, and, and yet at the same time, you know, it was, a, it was a time of upheaval and war, but their subject matter always seems very uplifting and, and bright. It's, it's funny, it's kind of a, an irony. You have 60 different pieces of art, that, and from the uh, Brooklyn Museum. Right. I mean, that's a real large collection that gives you kind of a feel for a bunch of different artists of that right. period. It does, it, it's, it goes all the way from, like I said, the, the academic artists, all the way to like Marc Chagall, Matisse, of course, um, Leger, uh, some of, there's a surrealist painting, there's a cubist painting. So it's really, it's kind of like a little art history lesson. Mm -hmm. And the wonderful thing about it, the whole point of it is that it's here in the Quad Cities until January 6th. So it's, it's a lot to see, but you can come back. You know, it's not like you're not in Chicago for the day and you have to see it along with 4,000 other people with their cell phones. Yeah, you know, right, this right. is like, and we have music in the gallery. And so it's fun. But what also is nice that the Figgy is doing is that you're making sure that you're having companion events that go with, and I really wanted to touch upon a, a couple of those. You have Ballet Quad Cities that'll be there. You right. have some speakers. Let, let's start with the speakers, because one that I thought was interesting was Dr. Jonathan Petropoulos, right. who is talking about a patronage, patronage to Nazi plunder, and, right. and almost the, the story of, of the Jewish connection right. to some of these paintings. Right. Yeah. Well, he's an expert in Nazi-era provenance, which is a huge issue in, art, in the art world now because of all these paintings that were taken um, from Jewish collectors and Jewish dealers. A lot of the early dealers for the Impressionists and Post-Impressionists were Jewish dealers in Paris. And so it's a very interesting um, little historical moment. And he, uh, he was an advisor on the Monuments Men movie and on the Woman in Gold on that lawsuit. Mm -hmm. So he's an expert on that particular aspect of this art history. And so. so not only do you get to see the paintings, get to see the, the wonder of the artwork, but also you're, you're letting people in on almost some of the backstories. Right. That's one thing that's been really interesting. You know, the symphony opened their season with a French modern mm -hmm. masterworks concert. And, and to, to learn about the, the you know, the parallel movement in music at the same time as this movement in art and the ballet, um, you know, the, the dancers actually studied the catalog for the show and they created these dances based on particular paintings in the show. And it, it's so much fun to see a, a whole you know, to see the same work, but from a completely different Interpretations, perspective. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And, yeah. And, and these collaborations have really been beneficial to not only the Figgy, but the other organizations that get involved. Well, that was our idea was, let's just make it community-wide. And the response that we got, we kind of just put it out there. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing, you know, what we got. Um, well, Augustana is doing a show of Swedish Impressionists. Um, the libraries are all doing special programs right. for people of all ages, which is it's just terrific. The, the Rock Island Library is doing a whole series about French authors at the same period. So it really shows what a deep cultural community there is in the Quad Cities. It's, 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 it's really been exciting. I want to talk about another exhibit that you have that's going on until January. Uh -huh. Everyone knows about Isabel Bloom. Right, yes. <laughs> they may not know about John Bloom as much, who right. was an incredible talent in his own right. He was, he was. So we have a show called John Bloom Close to Home that it goes all the way from works he did when he was a kid. That We have one that he won a blue ribbon at the, at the DeWitt Fair <laughs> for all the way through his life. Yeah. Um, he actually worked at the Arsenal and was an industrial illustrator for, to make money. Mm -hmm. um, but he mm -hmm. and Isabel Bloom met at the Stone City Art Colony, which was organized by Grant Wood. 
And, and, uh, you, and you see that influence as well. You do. And he, he actually, he was from DeWitt. He spent most of his life in Davenport. Um, he, he worked on mural commissions with Grant Wood. And um, most of his works are really depictions of subjects in the Quad Cities and, you know, Monkey Island. And uh, it's a wonderful little window into a, that past. But it's also very much related to French moderns. I mean, he studied, he went to the Art Institute, he studied Cezanne and Monet and all those artists. And, and, and the name of the exhibit is? Close to home. That's John, why. John because Bloom, close to home. Because yeah. that was the point, was the close to home. Because right. like you said, so much of the artwork has somewhat of a Quad City, regional, right. eastern Iowa yeah. uh, base to it. Right. And they all studied the Impression. I mean, Grant Wood went to France and painted in the same places that the Impressionists painted. I don't think John Bloom did. I don't think he made it to France. But um, he studied, you know, they, it, it all is related. Yeah. And it's nice to see the theme from one floor to the next right. floor to the next floor, and right. that's kind of the whole point. Mm -hmm. Right. Seen good crowds so far? Oh, yeah. No, it's been very enthusiastic. Well, yeah. we appreciate you being here. Tim Schiffer, who's the executive director, Figgy Art Museum. So many things that are going on in regards to the French modern, so please take a look at their website. You're going to learn a lot more of what is going on at the Figgy. And WQPT is also doing its part to support the military men and women in the cities who are serving our nation. We call it embracing the military. And Halloween isn't just for kids. The Rock Island family and MWR office is holding a Halloween bunko night at the Lock and Dam Lounge in Building 60 on Arsenal Island. It's coming up Thursday, October 25th. There is food and there will be a bar that will be open. And those dressed in costumes are eligible for prizes. It starts at 6 and you, make, you can make your reservations now by calling the MWR office on Arsenal Island. On the air, on the radio, on the web, and on your mobile device. Thanks for taking some time to join us as we talk about the issues on the cities. Public affairs programming on WQPT is brought to you by the Singh Group at Merrill Lynch, serving the wealth management needs of clients in the region for over 25 years.